In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to work with local notifications within your Flutter application. This tutorial will work for both iOS and Android. To get started, we're going to be using the Awesome Notifications plugin, which is an excellent package you can use to work with local notifications within your Flutter application. Or if you're using Firebase messaging, then this plugin can also help you with that. But today, we're only going to be taking a look at the local notification side of things. So to get started, come to pub.dev and then copy this dependency. And as a side note, link to all of the resources that I use within this video, as well as a link to the source code can be found in the video's description. So now that we have the dependency copied, I'm going to come to pubspec.yaml and then I'm going to paste this under the dependency section like so. Once this is done, I'll let Flutter Pub get do its magic. And while this is happening, the first thing that we're going to be doing is configuring the package so that it works on Android. So to get the Android side of things working, the first thing we'll do is come to Android app and then build.gradle. And here we're going to be changing a couple of things. Firstly, we're going to be finding the place where we have defined the compile SDK version, and we are going to be setting that to 34, like so. Once this is done, we are going to scroll down to where we see minimum SDK version. We're going to be setting that to 21, and then the target SDK version will be set to 34 as well. Once this is done, we are going to be coming to app, source, main, and then Android manifest.xml. And here we're going to be pasting in two permission clauses so that our application has the necessary permissions. So to do this, I am going to be basically coming and above the application tag, I'm going to be pasting the following ones in, which is uses permission vibrate and then receive food completed. With this done, do command save and that's pretty much all you have to do. Once this is done, what I would like you to do is make sure that the Android exported property is set to true. If you're using a newer version of Flutter, this should automatically be set to true and then that's pretty much all we have to do. Once this is done, you can close down everything. And now what I'm going to be doing is actually showing you guys the iOS side of things so you can skip if you're not interested in iOS. So for iOS, all we need to do is go to our iOS folder, then right click here and reveal the XC workspace project in Finder and open it up in Xcode. Once Xcode opens up, all you have to do is select the runner and then from there, actually set the minimum deployment to be iOS 11, then come to build settings. And here you want to go to the filter and you need to type in this distribute like so once you see this you're going to see that it says build libraries for distribution make sure that is set to no and that's pretty much all you have to do once this is done you can close down the ios side of things and hopefully now the plugin is configured correctly to work on both ios and android so now we can focus on the actual flutter side of things and see how to work with local notifications so to get started, the first thing that we need to do is that we can come to lib main.dart and we need to initialize our plugin. So to do that, what you can do is you can come to the main function and this will totally depend upon the logic of your application. But here, what I'm going to be doing firstly is that I'm going to be marking my function as asynchronous and then I will do an evade call to awesome notifications dot and then here we're going to be using initialize like so. Once this is done, the initialize function is basically going to expect us to pad it some parameters. The first one, if you hover over it, is going to be the actual default icon. So this refers to the icon that is going to be displayed when we click on the notification. So if I show it to you right now, it's going to be this icon on the device. If you want to keep it the default Flutter one, then you can pass a null value here, else you'll have to pass a string to an actual icon that's going to be displayed instead of this. Once this is done, the next thing that we have to do is pass in a list of actual notification channels. Notifications need to be published within a channel, so we need to have at least one notification channel within our application for our actual notifications to be published correctly. So in our list, we're just going to be adding one notification channel, and the notification channel is going to expect us to pass it some properties. The first is going to be the channel key, and this is going to be whatever you want it to be. It's going to be a string, so I'm going to say basic channel, like so then we have to give it a channel name so i'm going to give my channel name basic notifications and you can give it any name you want then we also need to give our channel a description so what i'm going to be doing is saying uh, test notifications channel or instead of doing test let's just do basic and then after this, we are also going to be passing some more properties to it. Another property that I want to change to my channel is the channel group key. So I'll do channel group key, and this is an optional string. And this is going to be basic underscore channel 
underscore group and you'll see why we need this later on once this is done you can also give a default color to the actual notifications and the way they appear or the led color which you can specify here but we're going to be leaving these empty all of these properties and what they can do can be actually found on awesome notifications pop.dev page so if you're looking for a more detailed intro how to not only work with very basic notifications but create more stunning notifications then you can take a look at the documentation once our notification channel has been created, the next thing that I'm going to be doing is outside of this list, I'm going to be creating our channel groups as well. So channel groups, again, is going to be a list of channel groups and channel groups are used to group a bunch of channels together if they somehow relate in the terms of notifications that they're sending. So what we're going to be doing, since we just have one notification channel, we'll create just one notification channel group and add our notification channel into it. So to do this, all you have to do is do notification channel group, then you need to give it a channel group key, which is going to be the same as our channel group key here so i'll paste that in and then we need to give our channel group a name and this is going to be basic group like so and then after this i'll do command save and that's pretty much all we have to do so now we've set up and initialized our plugin correctly. So before we proceed any further in the tutorial, what I'm going to be doing is saving all of the code that I've written and then start debugging my application on the device to make sure that we do not have any errors. Now that the application is actually running on the device, you can see that we get a actual debug log statement telling us that the notification channel, basic notification has been created. So this basically means that our awesome notifications plugin has been initialized correctly. But before we can actually start sending notifications to our user, we actually need to, on the start of our app, actually ask them if they allow us to actually send them notifications. So there is a very easy way to do this, and Awesome Notification makes it very easy for us. All we have to do is firstly determine if we actually have the permission. So for that, I'll create a bool, and I'm going to say that this is going to be is allowed to send notification, and I'm going to set this equal to await, and then Awesome Notifications. And then what we're going to be doing is calling a function called is notification allowed. This function will basically return to us the status of whether we have already been allowed the permission to have notifications sent to us. If this is not the case, I'm going to do is allowed to send notifications and then add an exclamation mark before that. So if you're not allowed to send notifications, that what we're going to be doing is that we'll do awesome notifications. And then from here, we are going to call request permission to send notification and then add a semicolon at the end. So if I do command save and I restart my application, now you're going to see when our application restart, it actually asks us that, hey, our project wants to send you notifications. Do you want to allow? So we can do allow or disallow. For this case, we'll allow, and that's the only way that it has to be. If you do not allow, then the notifications won't go through. So now that everything is set up, the last thing that we need to do is actually come to the My App class that Flutter gives us. And what I'm going to be doing here is that I'm going to be removing this. But before I remove this, I'll just copy the build function here. And then I'm going to be creating a new stateful widget. And I'll call this my app in the spirit of the my app class that we just removed. And then for the build function, I'll just paste in the build function that we had copied. And the reason we need to do this is because our my app state class and our my app now being a stateful widget is going to give us the ability to implement an init state function within our actual app, which we need in order to set up some actual callback functions for determining what happens to our notifications, whether a user clicks on them or dismisses it or something like that. And we need to initialize these and set up these callback functions in order for our notifications to actually be working properly. So if you don't do this, then they're not going to work properly. So all we're going to be doing now is actually firstly creating another file. And I'm going to be calling this notification underscore controller dot dart. And then this file is going to be a class which will be called notification controller. And this class will basically define some static functions on it, which are going to be responsible for handling what happens when certain actions happen on the notifications that are displayed to the user. So what I'm going to be doing is copying one of these functions in, and the function that I'm going to be copying it is going to be like so. So what this basically does is that this function is going to give us a callback when the notification gets created. And what we can do here is actually import the library, which is awesome notification. So if you want to write any custom code on what happens when a notification gets created, that code is going to go within these curly brackets. I'm going to paste in another callback function. This is going to be on notification displayed. So if you want to do something specific when the notification gets displayed, after this, I'll paste in another 
code block. This is going to be what happens when our actual notification gets dismissed. And finally, I'll paste in the last one, which is going to be a function which will determine what happens when our actual notification gets clicked on. So if you want to run some specific logic within your application, when the user clicks on a notification and take them to a specific page, that type of stuff can be done within this function. So now that this is done and we've set up our notification controller properly, I've just taken this notification controller straightly out of the actual awesome notifications pub.dev page as it's displayed there. So there's nothing that I've done to it myself. So if you are a bit confused as to why certain things are happening a certain way, this is just how you have to set up your callback functions in order for them to effectively work. Once this is done, now we can come back to our my app state class and within the init state function is where we're going to be setting up and linking our awesome notifications plugin to register these callback functions and then send events to them. So to do that, what we're going to be doing is basically doing awesome notifications. And then from here, I'm going to do set listeners. And then for set listeners, we can set all of the listeners that we want to set. So in the case, we want to set up a listener for on action receive method. All I have to do is do notification, notification controller. And then from here, all I can do is the actual functions on receive. And then just do this. And that's pretty much it. So now I've basically told the awesome notifications plugin that, hey, for the on action receive method, this is the callback function that's going to handle the callback for it. And now what I'll do is that I'll just copy and paste in the remaining three callback functions that we have. So we have one for on notification created, one for on notification display, and one for on dismiss action received. And you just need to set them off. If you don't want to use them, don't use them, but this needs to be set up in order for the plugin to work correctly. So now that this is done, we're almost at the fun part. So now what we're going to be doing now that we have the setup done is to actually just restart application and make sure that everything is working as intended. Once this is done, we can actually talk about how we can actually display notifications. So the displaying of the notification totally depends on you. What I'm going to be doing is coming to the build function. And then for the material app, I've set the home property to be a scaffold. On the scaffold, we can define a floating action button. So I'm going to set this to be a floating action button. And then I'm going to basically define what happens when we click on this button. And then before I do that, I'll also add an icon to this button just to make sure that this looks better. So I'm going to do icon and then icons.notification add like so, and then do command save. So now we have this button that we can click on to display a notification. And this is the thing that I want to do in order to display my notifications. But you can use the code that I'm going to be showing you right now anywhere within your application to basically show a notification to the user programmatically. So when the user presses on this button, this on press function is going to be called. And here, what I'm going to be doing is doing awesome notifications. And then you are basically going to be creating a notification. You can create a notification from JSON data or just a notification notification content object, and that's what we're going to be using. So I'll create a notification content object, and then it expects us to pass it a number of parameters. The two that are necessary are the ID of the actual notification. So this could be any ID that you have for the notification. I'll just give it one. And then also the channel key. So this needs to relate to the actual channel in which you want to show your notification in. And this channel already needs to be created when the actual plugin gets initialized. So you can see that we have just one notification channel. So I'll copy this key and then I'll come back and I'll paste the key here. So now this notification is going to be displayed within that specific channel. Once this is done, what I'm going to be doing is creating a very basic notification that just has a title and a body. So to do that, what I can do is set the title to be whatever I want. And this is going to be a string. So I'm going to say the classic title for every programmer, which is hello world. And then after this, I'm going to be setting the body for this. And this is going to be yay. I have local notifications working now. And then do command save. So once this is done, hopefully if I go and click on this button, a local notification is shown to us. And not only that, but you cannot hear it on the actual recording, but the device also makes a sound of a notification being received. So as you can see, it shows us that it says, hello world, yay, I have a local notification working now. 
To test the plugin on iOS, what you can do is spin up an iOS simulator or your device, and then you can try to build it. If you get an error similar to mine when I tried to build it, which says fail to verify module interface of runner due to the errors above, then a simple fix to that would be to open up the XC workspace project within Xcode, navigate to the runner build settings, and then find the build libraries for distribution and set this property to no. And then after this, just close down Xcode, nothing else needs to be done. And then you can actually come and run or start debugging the application again. And hopefully this time the application should build properly. And as you can see, the application now seems to be working perfectly fine. You open the application up, it asks you if you want to allow it to give you notifications, you click on allow. And then hopefully now if we click on the actual notification button, a notification is showed to it with the same content that we had defined for the title and the body. We can dismiss it and it works as intended. And that's pretty much it for today's tutorial. As always, please don't forget to leave a like on my video as well as subscribe to my channel so that you get notified every time I upload a new video. With that said, stay happy, stay healthy, keep learning, keep growing. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.